Hello everybody. This is some construction tip maybe you can find handy when you do uh, when you build your Darwin Mini. Uh, we'll talk about the horn orientation, the XL320, about the rivet system if you happen not to have used them before, like from the Arlo or Bauloy stem. And then the battery system need to talk about also. There's some uh, technical issue. So the XL30 horn orientation. And uh, if you work with uh, Dynamics or AX12 or 18A before, you remember that the horn always have a slit, what I call the, the eye mark, and you need to align that with the top of the servo motor. But this would correspond to the position, uh, the middle position, usually 512, if the range go from 0 to 1024, but that's the middle range of the servo in its uh, position control mode. On the XL320, it actually, on the bottom side of it, opposite to this, uh, shall we say, eye mark, it's a double eye mark also. And depending on which servo you're mounting and which for a part of your robot, sometimes you have to align the eye mark to the top of the servo. Sometimes you have to align the double eye mark, which is kind of bottom of the horn, to the top the servo motor so need to watch out for that and uh, if you read the quick start manual they do show it properly in there but they don't have any text so you have to watch out so most servo are mounted bay on the eye mark that means the eye mark going to be on top of the servo motor which you don't see here but now you see on on id1 you see the two double eye mark at the bottom of this uh, servo motor except I think seven and eight, then you need to watch out. So you need to look at the picture carefully as you mount them. Seven and eight, you can see that the two double I mark is on the top of the servo motor. So please keep that in mind. If not, uh, when you put in the example uh, motion file, uh, everything is upside down for certain things and it may not work properly. Well, how do you rotate the horn? The horn by default, when you get it from the uh, the box the kit, you're gonna see that most of them or they should be lined up with the single eye mark lined up with the top of the servo motor. So in order to get two double mark lined up with the top of the motor, you have to use a rivet tool. And the rivet tool has the what I call the horn end and it has two loop protrusion there just to fit exactly into the hole on the horn. And then you just, when you hook it up, you can rotate it to align any which way that you need. Next, let's talk about the rivet system. The rivet system have a sleeve and then also a stem. Uh, they come on the Darwin Mini, they come two sizes, a little shorter one and a little bit longer one. And they're all you clear plastic material. And I try to do a close up here so you can see so most of the stem have the rod and then you have to see the little teeth there. It's kind of hard to tell. But the little teeth will go, maybe you can see there's a slot on the clear side here. You can go here and in lock position. So because it's clear, it's kind of hard to tell. So I have some more picture here using the uh, Ocean all all rivet system, which is using uh, opaque material so you can see it. So these little teeth here will go into the pre-made slot here. When you push it down, when it reaches this part, the two uh, teeth kind of pops out, and this is called the lock position. Depending on the situation, sometimes you want to fasten the rivet and, and assemble your part using just pushing the sleeve in first and then putting the stem later, but sometimes you want to use this uh, lock position kind of situation, especially when you want to reach into a smaller area and stuff like that. So let's go on here. Once you have it locked in the lock position, like you see here, the only way you can install this uh, rivet uh, properly, rivet, I mean stem rivet properly, is using the finger end of the rivet tool. So you put the finger kind of to keep the stem separated uh, up there from the sleeve. Also, there's another end, which is a sleeve tip end here. You can use it to push the sleeve in and out for tight area, or I use it, you know, there's like an extension of my finger uh, when I need to reach in tight corners or when you kind of take the robot apart and then sometimes you have to use this one to push the sleeve out. 
So river attachment, there are about two techniques. This is the method one. Uh, the easiest, usually it helps that if you have, shall we say, the, there are plenty of room from the outside. And this is the easiest one to do. You just push the sleeve in first. Once it's all in through the, your parts, like two uh, of the uh, uh, piece of uh, plastic here, and then you can put the stem in. The other way to do it is you put the stem into the sleeve first outside. And then when you put it in, somehow you had to put the sleeve in first before you can put the stem in. If you have the stem uh, at the and the sleeve all together and you already push down the stem, this will uh, prevent it from going down. There is no way you can do it. Uh, you can push down. You can force it, but then, then it's probably damaged the sleeve or the stem or wear them out. So this is technique one, essentially. Sleeve in first, and then next is a stem. Or measurement two, you put the stem into the sleeve first. And this one you use, uh, I use it to, sometimes I need to reach into the tight corner or I cannot put my finger into there. So like, for example, especially like somewhere in the body of the bot or somewhere like the head of the part of the bot, you probably had to use this uh, technique. And they also use this technique to remove the rivet. So essentially, you put the rivet and stem together, the stem and the sleeve together, use the finger end, kind of hook it up in between the stem and the sleeve. And then you position that over the part and then use the rivet tool to push down the sleeve and then we'll go down. And then it's just a matter of pushing the stem down then at that point. So when you have it here, if you somehow need to remove or change something, you need to use the finger tool again, kind of sticking it in and pry it up a little bit so that you can pull the stem off the sleeve. And then you can gently just kind of wiggle, pull everything out. Next is the battery holder. Uh, in the Darwin Mini Kit, there are two types of battery holder that come with it. You do carefully that we one type where you can see there's only two pin connector that's uh, for the battery cable. So this is the operating holder, shall we say. And then you find out that they have an, a two more holder that do not have the two pin connector at all. But you can see that the, there's a USB uh, micro connector there. Those are uh, to charge the battery. Now, Mobotis people recommend to have separate holder for operating. I mean, these, the two pin connector type here will be the, will be the one uh, mounted on the robot. And then every time you need to charge the battery, you have to take the battery out of these operating holder and put them in charging holder which is outside the bot. Now, this is recommended by robotics people. You already know, oh, that's lots of trouble. And recommended by robotics because of the way the circuit is set up. So they have a PDF that have the drawing of all the different parts of circuitry for the uh, controller. And even though there is a switch here to whether it's, you know, connect circuit or not, to connect VDD to ground, uh, they're worried because J1 and J2 is where the battery goes in. And you can see it's connect two together. So they're worried that if you charge it, even the switch are not on, the VDD may reach back into the controller and, uh, and, and kind of ruin it and destroy it. So they, that's why they recommend to have a separate operating holder and have charging holders uh, completely external from the robot. So, and they also recommend that, well, how to remove the front battery to recharge it then. What they recommend is pull both legs out so that it kind of uh, 90 degrees to the body. So this is a, the front of the body here, the thorax. This is the battery that is the front of the battery. And they want us to spread out the legs out kind of 90 straight out, actually 90 degrees to the body. And then use two fingers, kind of put them position in this corner and this corner and kind of, to kind of pull out the battery, okay? And then this battery not room to slide the battery out and charge it. 
So I have a big problem with this procedure. So I did some more research to see. What I found out is you can also buy a third type of lipoberry full holder. This one they sell on their eShop. And it's called the lithium ion battery charger set LBB040. And what it does, this one have combined operating, you know, the two pin connector here, and also it has USB micro connector. So it's combined operating and charger holder. So I look at this and say, hmm, maybe I can do something with this. So uh, I did some more research. And what it does, I look at different way that the robot can be powered up or disconnected. And this is a little video here, so it kind of sells split the tonality. So just, you, we can go through it and you can, uh, you can go on the next one. Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to show how the me Darwin would uh, power would come on depending on how many batteries you have on it. So right now it has both batteries in. Turn it on. I'll delay the LED that lit up. The Bluetooth, blue LED flashing, and it's ready position. In the next one, I'm going to remove the external or the lower battery out. So right now you can see that I removed the external or the, bar, or the outside battery, but I still keep the battery cable into the system. You see that the servo LED let on a little bit. But the Bluetooth never came on and nothing much moved because there's just not enough uh, battery power. Next, I'm going to remove the actual bit of battery cable. And now you see that even now I'm turning on the switch now, the LED uh, for the server won't even come down, come on. Because uh, the circuitry had been disconnected completely. So what I'm proposing is an alternate approach and I have tested this approach. However, you must be clear that this is not sanctioned by robotics at this point in time. Hopefully they will see this video and maybe they have the engineer check on it and, and see how they like it. Hopefully uh, they think this is a worthwhile procedure. Essentially, I'm using the third type battery holder. That being the one that can be operating and charging at the same time. So I use that for the front one, the one that kind of hard to get in. And once you install it, kind of hard to get in and out. So this one is the third type of holder, operating and charging. So I repeat again, that's the one just right in front of the front battery. In the back battery, you can just use the operating on it. For this part here, we can follow the robotics uh, a sanctioned procedure just operating here only that's fine and you can see that it has a two pin connector here so that you can have the battery power going out to the cm904c okay and then what it does is the charging procedure is changed now slightly and i can repeat again this is not sanctioned by robots at this point in time hopefully they watch this video and they can tell me i'm wrong or still dangerous to the CM904 controller or not. So what it does is I attack the back battery out of the robot. So I charge this back battery out of the robot completely. So also, the battery two pin cable here, I take it out of its socket completely. So if you remember the video, video it pretty much uh, break the total circuit out and hopefully it won't have anything coming back to the controller. And then I put the uh, micro USB charger uh, connector, just plug it right there. So basically the front battery, I can charge it in place inside the robot and leave it alone. I don't have to take it in and out at all. I only take in and out the back battery charge from the outside. 